Hey guys, um, welcome to this new tutorial on Rhino modeling. Um, I'm going to be showing, uh, I'm doing a course on how to model um, a building um, for second year, like introduction to Rhino, right? And we are not doing the same building than last year, uh, which we did the LF1 from Saha Hadid. And this year I decided that to just go back to like uh, Neil Denari, some of his uh, earliest, earliest work. Um, so if you go to the Neil Denari website, you can see that we have um, the Vertical Smooth House, uh, which is from 1997. Um, and this was um, some of the work uh, that I was looking at um, when I was just um, in uni. So it was kind of interesting um, to be able to model it back again and, and using Rhino and some of the tools that we have today. And, and I thought that it's interesting because it, it just presents some interesting moments of um, both with uh, traditional geometry and also with um, some surfaces that are kind of interesting and, and in this video I'm not going to show all the kind of framework and, and these kind of trusses that it's very straightforward to model in, in Rhino or in any package but I'm going to just be showing uh, rough uh, sketching out these surfaces and, and a few tools of kind of blend surfaces and things like that um, that could help if you're stuck uh, modeling this house and and just trying to figure out how to just work with some of these kind of surfaces here. So mainly we're going to be looking at something like this detail and looking at blend surface and how to trim a surface and things like that. So uh, let's get to it. Um, so we're going to start just by like um, working in the front view. I'm not going to bring some of the images because um, the operations that I'm going to be working with uh, I don't. I don't really care if they're precise. I'm just gonna give some tools to actually approach the project, as opposed to just be telling you step by step of how to model the house, right? So I'm gonna just do um, roughly something like. So I'm just gonna do a curve, right? And of course, the character of the curve is something that you could work for a while if you're designing um, a house like that. So let's start by just creating something like this, right? And that looks alright. Um, we will see how to touch the ground and maybe some rules of tangency as well. Um, so let's do an extrusion um, of that right in this direction. And that looks pretty good. Um, so the trick here is that um, now we're going to create a similar shape, uh, but we're going to do it from the from the right view now, right? So see how this comes together right so we're gonna just start doing something like this just you could just basically work with a few curves like that uh, and this time I'm just gonna extrude that curve um, we could actually move this first. Uh, I'm going to move it north so and then extrude the curve like this direction, right? So that's looking all right. Um, so basically, um, some of the tricks of, of these surfaces that you of the house got to do with like blending this um, this part of the house uh, with this other one, right? And if if you want to just make a connection between these curve curves, you need to kind of uh, understand the tangency of the surface, right? So the surface is kind of being projected in this direction, and this surface is being projected in that direction. It's the same way in which curves work, right? So if you have a straight line and another straight line, and you do something like blend curve, uh, so blend curve is here. We're just going to say that one and that one, and you see that this is the idea behind uh, what we're going to do with the surface, right? We're going to just project one curve, and in this case you have this kind of handle, um, and it's going to be blending and connecting to the tangency of the other one. Um, so if you would imagine that for a surface that would have to happen every kind of point, and, and of course nerves, uh, they don't have points, so it's just at, at every moment, right? So in this case blend curve 
really useful tool to just create one curve out of these two if you join them, right? Very nice transition there. Um, but the problem is that if we do blend surface, which is the version of that uh, here, blend surface, I just typed it there, and I connect this one and this one, this is a big mess, right? Like, um, it doesn't have a way of just maybe down here it would, um, but it's gonna try to do that all over. Uh, so if we say okay, you see we get something that you might like in some points, but it's just very, very strange, right? Um, so I'm gonna undo that and then maybe just uh, we have some um, intersection there, but we can get rid of that. Um, so let's see. Um, Let's try to uh, start adding some splits and some cuts to these surfaces, so we can actually start um, making some some blending. So one thing that I could do is just I'm gonna change layer here. I'm gonna make a line, but I'm gonna make sure that I have near uh, on. So you see that I'm snapping to near, and then also that's gonna be perpendicular. So I could just do a line there. Uh, so maybe I'm interested in just doing a similar thing here. I'm not going to be so precise, really. Um, just these lines there. Um, and you see that I can actually split this object, right-click with this curve. So now I have this one and this one. Uh, and I'm going to do the same thing for this one, splitting it. Right, so now we can actually do blend surface. Um, like that. And you see that we have this now these sliders to kind of work with the control points, so maybe that's what I'm looking for. Uh, and if you see that if we do the blend surface, obviously we have to change the layer here. Um, we could start getting these kind of connections between these elements, right? So that's looking pretty good. Um, so that's a way of approaching it, really. Like um, it's just starting to split the surface, whatever you want, um, and then start trimming and, and basically adding um, some more detail. I'm gonna delete this uh, in case that you have some problems. Sometimes if, if these surfaces are kind of diagonal, which in the case in the case of Neil and Ari they are, and you don't have these kind of perfectly orthogonal. Um, surfaces uh, you might run into some problems right so I'm gonna add uh, and I'm also gonna do it for sections and supposed to just like the whole thing um, so I'm gonna just add a few few more cuts here um, so maybe there and maybe one more there right and maybe here and maybe there right something like that and let's split those surfaces. I'm just right clicking to repeat the operation so I can get split. Um, so it's just repeating the operation split with these different control points, right? And and I can do basically blend surface between each chunk. Um, but let's imagine for a second that um, blend surface is not working, right? So I'm going to do blend curve. So blend curve. Uh, and that will allow me to pick this curve, that curve. And blend curve should work, right? That's pretty straightforward because uh, in this case the curves should have a decent information as we drew them. Uh, so I'm going to do blend curve again, this guy with this guy, and there. So if I do something like a loft here, you see that the loft, it's not the operation that I want to just deal with if I was doing this manually, like this chunk, not by this blend surface. Um, so here you're going to have this kind of gap and that's not going to be working for you, right? So one, one approach to that is just basically um, doing duplicate borders. And obviously I'm, I'm going to get rid of all the extra lines here. Uh, so that one we have duplicated. There's a nice command called du cell duplicates. Uh, oh, this curve we're gonna explode. So here, if in the selection tab, this is gonna select all duplicates, so we don't have any duplicates, right? And now we have this curve, right? 
and between these curves, uh, we're missing this one and this other one, so I'm going to do duplicate borders again. I'm going to get that, that it's the border of the surface, explode that, and then because I have duplicates, I'm going to just select duplicates and delete them, right? So just make sure that I don't have any duplicate curves. But now I have this curve on this side, the top, the bottom, and the left one. So now we can actually do um, a command that it's somewhere here on surface. Uh, if I, you left press this kind of button here, you're going to get to this command here that it surface from two, three, or four edge curves. So when I use that, and I'm going to select this one, this one, that one, and this one. And you see that we have a nice kind of similar to the blend surface, but if that's not working, I mean, this, this command is pretty good as well to just create that surface, change it layer, and that's it. Uh, so that works pretty well as well. Um, let's see, I'm going to just do the blend surface again, because it, in my case it works. I'm just showing you an alternative in case this is not working for you, right? So blend surface between uh, this segment and that segment. Right, um, but I want to just start leaving a gap. You see that right now that uh, that's working very like perfectly. So maybe this in this case I want to do it just with a bit of less tangency, just to start kind of leaving a gap. And then I'm going to repeat the operation between this one and that one. And again, I'm going to just maybe even a bit more. So I'm just kind of playing a little bit with those gaps. Uh, then changing layer again. Maybe we want to work in that layer. Altogether. You see that we could start working with those gaps. Now we have all this surface looking pretty good. Um, so again, I really like this tab that it's a selection tab because I mean, if I have curves, I could just leave all the curves really in another layer, right? So I could just look at my geometry like that. Um, or turn them on and just start looking at some of the details that I get um, with some of those lines marking the edges. Um, so one more thing, you could also split this surface. Um, basically what we want to split is maybe this surface here. So I'm going to do just a line like uh, there. right? This is top view. Um, so if I want to split objects again, select objects to split this guy. And cutting object is going to be this line that is straight. Uh, and you see that because I'm doing it in the top view, I got that chunk out. I can have this kind of section being projected from the top like that. And I can maybe get rid of that. Um, so we now know that this element is here. Uh, let's do... so we're looking at it from here, right? I want to do a curve that would touch the ground like this. Um, so I'm going to just start dealing with some of the, the idea of tangency, right? So I could just turn on snapping to just snap to the ground if we want, but and turn off near because that's not being helpful for us. And if you want to just do a straight line, you need to do three points in the um, in a line. In that way, whatever you kind of start creating, you see it will just get to the tangent of, the, in this case, the ground, right? So you need three points in a straight line, one, two, three, and then you just could go up anywhere, really. I'm going to press Alt, not to... Um, to do any kind of um, uh, not to do any snapping to anything in the scene, uh, and I'm gonna move this one a bit back like that, right? So that's looking pretty good. Let's just bring it here, right? So I'm gonna extrude this curve now. I could just extrude it there. And this should be actually higher, but I mean, I don't know. It's, it's just, I'm not doing it with the plants here, so I'm just showing you some of the tools. 
Um, so I'm creating this extra surface, and maybe I want to just do uh, a blend in between these two now. Uh, so I'm going to do this blend surface here and here. I'm going to just make sure that I don't have any curves there because I couldn't pick. So blend surface, in this case this Oh, we forgot to cut this one as well. You see, if we do the blend, it's going to connect to both sides. So let's just do that split again. Um, so I'm going to split this object. And then on the top view, right click, this is the cutting object, split. You see, and it's just in the same line than the other one. So now that it's split, as much as it's split, this, uh, these two are just part of the same surface, so you wouldn't see that seam. Uh, so you see that now we have that. And blend surface should be able to work properly. Um, so what we're creating here is just maybe I want to work with some of these tangents just to kind of define. Maybe you're interested in doing something a bit with a bit more tension at the beginning and then maybe you have to play here and just design whatever you prefer. Um, so that's looking pretty good. Let's say OK. And you see that we're starting to kind of inform some of the details, this geometry and starting to connect some of these elements. Um, or of course you could actually start then um, thinking of doing some thicknesses and things like that, why not, with offset surface. Um, so you could say solid on, click to flip the normals and zero the 0 0.2 and you could start kind of working with some of the thickness and start creating something very nice um, like that. Um, but I would definitely leave the thickness er moments for, for the end because you want to just work with the surface first, like get it right, um, see what you're doing. And sometimes you might need to kind of uh, do the offset in many different ways, just like maybe duplicating edges and and offsetting the edges and then building new surfaces if, if that doesn't work. Especially if you have variating thicknesses, I think that the house actually has a thickness in some point that is a bit thicker here. So well, it's just uh, in, in this tutorial I'm just showing you some of these kind of modeling tools that could be useful for for this house in particular. Uh, I think that some of those moments are very interesting, and it's just um, that you can easily do them with Rhino. So um, that's it for this one, and I'll see you guys soon.